Awesome, awesome. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Bachman, for the awesome presentation. So yeah, um, I, I guess it's my turn to present. So I'll start by um, introducing myself. So my name is Uchichuku Emmanuel Obasi. I am a software engineer at a company called Grafana Labs. So Grafana Labs is the company behind the open, the popular open source project called Grafana. And I also happen to be a co-organizer of the Kubernetes Community Days um, Africa event. And today I would be talking about you know, my journey and how uh, open source changed my life um, for good. So yeah, I'll be sharing my screen in a bit. Cool, can you all see my screen? Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, can you all see my screen? I'll be sharing yes, my screen to we can see your screen. his home. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so, so like I said, the title of my topic today is embracing open source as a catalyst for groups. And you know, this is the very sharing a personal story um, on how you know, open source changed my life you know, um, in a very positive way. So yeah, um, uh, I will be sharing a, a lot of details you know, about how you know, I moved from being like a very novice uh, developer to actually working you know, in in a world class uh, company, basically, and how open source was you know, part of you know, my uh, route you know, as an engineer. So, yeah, um, basically, this is like a table of content. So, diving in into how it was before I found open source, I'll also be talking about of the open source festival which happened you know, last year, 2020. I'll also be talking about how I was able to get into the LFX mentorship program and how I was able to join the Fana Labs, how I was able to also join the CNCF ambassadors program, and then I would be sharing some key takeaways. And lastly, the final words. So yeah, uh, so before I dive into you know, sharing what life used to be for me, um, prior to learning about open source, I would want to actually tell you a story of you know, something that happened recently. So uh, I think that was like two weeks ago or three weeks ago, on a, on a very cool Saturday morning, I was basically on my couch and I was reflecting back on how I started basically, you know, how where I came from, I was able to like move from zero to hundred. And, you know, it struck me how open source was you know, a big part of what you know pivoted me from being a, a mediocre um, novice developer to being you know very like a, a very good um, developer and then you know it just came to my mind that you know, open source actually changed my life for good and then i went on twitter and i tweeted about it and to my greatest surprise you know it had you know, some traction i mean you could see and 75 likes, 21 tweets, and five comments. And I think the most interesting part was this particular comment. So someone commented on the thread and actually mentioned that open source community changed his or her life uh, too. And you know that actually struck me. You know, actually I thought it was just me, but you know after seeing this comment, I actually you know, knew that oh, it's not just me, actually there are a lot of people that open source has you know, actually had some impact in their lives in one way or the other. And yeah, uh, that brings me uh, to how it all began, basically. So basically, you know, before the dawn, uh, before I knew what open source was, you know, I was basically 20, I was in, 20 in college, I was in computer study, computer science in school. And I wanted, at the time, I wanted to just be a freelance web developer, you know, just wanted to start up my own web agency and just hire people and just build, you know, 
websites for people and, and make money. That was basically what I you know, dreamt to be at the time. And at the time, I had zero understanding of what. And of course, I had to no opportunity for career advice. So that was the position I found myself up until, um, yeah, uh, so basically up until I think um, January, January to February 2020. So at the time I had moved to my fourth year in college and, you know, I was, I was asking myself a lot of questions, you know, so how do I move from here? You know, actually, is this enough for me? Is being a freelance web developer enough for me? Is that where I, I want to go? And, you know, at the time I, I had zero opportunities. So what it meant was, you know, even getting someone that I could build websites from was, was very, very difficult. It was very difficult. So of course I was young, I was dumb, and I was broke at the time. So I mean, forgive the, uh, the little uh, the typos I, I had to report. If you could see this routine on February 10th, 2020. So I was so devastated. Like I, I, I wrote this with anger. You know, I actually needed more. I needed something more. And yeah, uh, fast forward to. The same February 2020, I think I went on Twitter and then I saw uh, the open source community Africa. And then I, I, I noticed they were planning an event called the Open Source Festival. And I had never heard of open source before. But, you know, taking a look at you know, the list of speakers and you know, what they planned and everything, I was super pumped that I wanted to attend the event. And you know, just a little bit of background context. I live in the eastern part of Nigeria. I'm currently in Enugu, Nigeria, and Enugu to Lagos, it's very long journey. And at the time, like I said, I was broke, um, but I wanted to be there. I wanted to actually, you know, be there live to learn you know, more about open source. So I took, and you know, with the help of uh, the open source community, Africa. You know, they gave some some uh, sponsorships you know, for travels and accommodation at some point. Then I was able to attend the event in Lagos, Nigeria. So these are like you know images of you know the memories and the experiences we had. I mean, like I am part of the Oscar um, emo chapter, um, and basically these are my friends, and we went together. And the interesting part, the the amount of context I was able to absorb, the amount of knowledge I was able to gain at the event. Like, I learned a lot about open source. I learned a lot about like, open source licenses. I learned a lot about, you know, um, different uh, communities within the open source and how I could leverage of open source to grow my career. So this was an awesome event. I mean, huge props to the organizers of this event. It was really awesome. And after this event, uh, I went back home and, you know, I, I was thinking, I, I thought to myself, you know, so after this, what next? I mean, now I know what open source is, how do I move from here? And then I, I told myself, you know, enough is enough. Um, you know, let's just, let's get serious, you know, let's you know, get things done, basically. And from this slide, you could see an image of what happens to be my goals for for the year for 2020 so i took some time i wrote down you know, i told myself you know, i was going to like master the skills i was going to code every single day i was also going to contribute to open source because i had already learned what open source was and of course you know some books and some coding tests i i would do as well so i was super pumped i was highly motivated to you know, push and you know become the best version of myself and yeah, that actually you know, drove me into you know, coding every single day. So I and my friends, we actually started this thing called, you know, I think, on, on ending days of code, basically. So like we are coding every single day. And we didn't really put a cap to you know, how long we would be coding, basically. So along the line, I learned about the LFX mentorship program. You know, I should probably, as you have seen on, on previous slides, I my plan was to continue to GSOC and I applied to GSOC, of course, but then I didn't get into GSOC. Along the line, I learned about the LFX mentorship program, and it was actually 
um, through the community I belong to on, on WhatsApp group. So at the time I was this on this WhatsApp group, you know, a few bits, a young, vibrant um, open source enthusiast. And eventually I that was where I got the link to the LFX mentorship program. Of course, uh, I applied and you know if prior to the application you know i went through the like a list of projects that i participating and one project caught my attention and that was uh, the thanos project so basically you know i've always been doing you know, front-end web engineering for a very long time and so projects so project topics related to that and then looking for me i found this uh, issue on thanos which was you know, fashioning, building a version you know, for the Thanos documentation site. And then I was I was super excited because uh, I, I, I saw a project I felt I could contribute to. And, you know, I immediately um, commented on the threads. And, you know, right from there, I started picking up interest on that project. You know, I started, like, doing research immediately. And trust me, um, at the time, you know, I had zero expectations that I would be selected. I was just genuinely interested. Of course, I was being hopeful to get selected, of course, but I was genuinely interested and I wanted to just you know, contribute to this project. And, you know, basically, I think, um, you know, you, should, you don't have to you know, start big. You know, basically, you just have to start small and show love and interest. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so yeah, um, so of course, uh, eventually I got accepted into the program, and you know I spent like a couple of months, three to four months, you know, contributing to the Thanos project. And while I was, you know, when I joined, while I was contributing to Thanos, I noticed, you know, there were some other mentees that were also contributing to Thanos as well, and I wanted to like work with them because I've, I, I felt I was working in a silo just me trying to you know like work on this project and I, I felt you know maybe i could reach out to this uh other mentees and probably maybe we could just sync up and just you know, work together and collaborate together and then i reached out to them and then we bonded you know right from the first uh, day so we created um so i was able to create this initiative you know, called the Thanos. i and my friends of course so we created this uh, initiative called the Thanos Mentees Friday Hangout. So basically, you know, we meet every Friday, we would you know, try to reflect on what we are able to achieve for that week, you know, what our plans are for the next week. And of course, uh, we also, you know, have chats about, you know, our careers and how we could, you know, basically improve ourselves. And from time to time, you know, we invited to, uh, open source maintainers you know, within the space. So we invited maintainers from the Prometheus project, from, from the Cortex project, from Thanos, of course, and from Kubernetes and so on. So it was fun, it was really fun. It was, it was, I think it was the highlight of my, um, uh, my stay as a mentee at Thanos. And yeah, um, eventually I completed my project. Of course, it was it took months and it took a lot of perseverance, a lot of hard work because I've not done something like that before. Uh, I mean, like I've always been a front-end developer, but then building a completely automated tool that could you know, do some form of versioning uh, for the Thanos documentation site was something I had zero clue about. But then I was, you know, I, I, I believed in myself. I knew you know, if I could put in the time and hard work and perseverance, I could get it done. And of course I did. Um, and you know, on the, when my project was finally merged to the Thanos core or to the Thanos repo, I immediately jumped on Twitter and I tweeted, you know, um, how excited I was basically. And to my great surprise, it also got you know a lot of tractions as well. I mean, for all you could see here, you could see you know, 253 likes. It was huge, it is huge. And yeah, um, after you know i shared this uh, uh after i shared this tweet i basically i knew the next step for me was to get a job because basically i was currently on my finals in college the next step for me was to join a company and because i had contributed to open source to Thanos, 
I wanted to remain within the space. I wanted to work with a company that is open source. I wanted to work on an open source project. And you know, basically, I wanted to you know remain within the space. And then you know, I learned about the about a company called Grafana Labs. And basically, my encounter with Grafana Labs was through the observability con uh, event that Grafana Labs do, I think, um, every year. So I, I learned about the observability con, I registered, and I, of course, the event really opened my eyes into you know, the, you know, what observability was and the opportunities you know, within the observability space. And that actually, you know, deep, like, interest, you know, into me uh, diving deep into the company and getting to learn about the company and you know, getting to know, you know how I could be part of the company. And you know, the interesting part was it actually took, uh, ticked, you know, ticked off most of the things I was looking for in, in a company. So, I mean, like, you know, they were a completely open source company, you know, they were completely remote first, they had great engineering core and you know the product you know, was a really great product. You know, they had a great community, you know, it promises a, you know, a career great opportunities and a lot more. And you know, I, I was excited because I, I never knew a company like this existed. So eventually I, I moved to the to their jobs page and you know, I, I sent my application. Of course, at some point you know, before sending that application, I was scared because I felt I wasn't good enough. I felt, you know, I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm basically based in Nigeria. How, how can I get employed in, in, in a global company like this? But uh, you know, with the help of my friends, you know, they motivated me and they pushed me to just apply. And I did, and of course, uh, I, I, I got into Grafana Labs as. A, as a software engineer, I currently work you know, basically on the, on the front end platform team yeah, at Grafana Labs. And yeah, uh, you know, soon, uh, soon after I joined Grafana Labs, uh, I was still very much active in the CMCS space. And you know, along the lines, I, I learned about the CNCF Ambassadors Program. So you know, I, I was super excited about it as well. You know, I, I felt you know, I could be part of this. Uh, and then I applied as well. I applied to the CNCF Ambassadors Program, and you know, at the time I, I didn't really know how huge it was. I didn't really know the the caliber of people that you know that are being accepted as uh, as ambassadors. So after I sent in my application, I went to the CNCF site, and then I saw a list of the ambassadors. You know, I I, saw, I mean I lost hope basically because I I, I mean I was seeing like principal engineers at Microsoft, at Google, you know, chief cloud architects, you know, people that have lots and lots of experiences. I was like, you know, there is no way I was going to get in. Basically, there is no way. But, you know, to my greatest surprise, uh, I got a mail that, that I was accepted into the ambassador's program. I was super excited because at the time, I, I think, you know, we had, we've not uh, had a CNCF ambassador from West Africa. So what it meant was I was like the first in West Africa, which you know was huge for me because basically it, it basically promises an opportunity for me to make a lot more impact you know, because I've always been value driven, you know, right from day one. So so yeah, I of course I went on Twitter as well and I tweeted you know, how excited I was about you know, getting into the ambassador's program. And yeah, um Basically, I will end the story here, um, but I, I would want to you know, end with some few key, take, uh, key takeaways. So basically, this is my journey, this is my story, and I know it's different for different people. But then I, I actually took out time to reflect on my journey and actually you know, document what I think like helped me you know, get to the level I am here. And I feel if you should follow the same, so the number one is share openly. So because it's open source, it's highly important to cultivate that open culture in yourself, you know, make it part of your personality. I mean, from what you could see, uh, I I mean, like right from the beginning of the slides, I always been tweeting, you know, I've always been sharing uh, basically what has been going on and 
And trust me, people are watching, people are actually looking, people are actually monitoring you. And yeah, just uh, be open, share open, you know, basically embrace open source you know, as your personality, basically. And the second one is take responsibility. So take res uh, res taking responsibility is quite an important skill both as a software engineer and also as an, an open source um, um, enthusiast or anyone interested in open source. Because basically in open source, you know, um, it is expected you take full responsibility of whatever you are, you are planning to work on or whatever you are, you are assigned to do. So I think it's a very, very important skill set to embrace. And then the next is, you know, if you can, apply to open source mentorship programs so there are a lot of uh, a couple of open source mentorship programs like the lfx mentorship program which is open for both students and you know, i think all, uh, in, uh, experienced engineers as well so long as you are quite new to the open source i think you can participate within the lfx mentorship program i don't know if that's still the case but i during my own time that was how it was structured you know, there is GSOC for students in the university, there is RTG for basically underrepresented folks within the community. Uh, there are a lot more. There is Google Summer of Talks. I mean, if you are interested in technical writing and technical documentation, you can actually contribute to open source by participating in the Google Summer of Talks program and a lot more. And then the, the, the another point is to collaborate with others. I mean, from what I mentioned, you know, while I was contributing to the Tanas project, I was able to reach out to others. And trust me, trust me, it was the best decision I have made till date. I mean, we still talk to today. We meet once every month to discuss and share ideas. And we've become best of friends, you know, basically. So it's very important to learn how to collaborate with others. And that brings me to the next point, which is joining a community. I mean, I can't over, I can't overemphasize like how community has really been a huge part of my growth as a software engineer. And I, I think you know, if you if you are really really interested in going far, and if you are really interested in you know, becoming the best version of yourself, I would highly advise you join a community. And there are a lot of community. Uh, you know, within the ecosystem. I mean, like now we have like the CNCF uh, community for for most of us interested in cloud native. You know, you have like the Oscar. If you are interested in open source, you can join the Oscar, the Open Source Community Africa, and there are a lot more uh, open source communities you know, within the continent. So feel free to join in one of them, and of course, uh, be kind. Um, so open source uh, is people. You know, you to work with people on a day-to-day -day basis. And because you work with people, it's very advisable to be kind to people because you'd want to treat someone how you would want to be treated. So yeah, um, please be kind. And reach out, you know, reach out to people, reach out to mentors, reach out to maintainers. Don't be scared. Um, everyone started, you know, just like you. Um, Feel free to reach out to anyone, basically, on Twitter, on the project um, communication platforms, anywhere. Just try as much as possible to reach out to people. And the last but not the least is paying it forward. Um, I am a huge um, fan of the community, and basically, you know, I feel you know, the community has really done a lot for me, and I feel the need to pay it forward. And that's why you know, I happen to be the co-organizer of GCD Africa event, you know, and you know, that's why I do the things I do today. And yeah, um, final words um, I have for anyone that is really interested in you know, embracing open source, that is really interested in growing his or her career. Uh, my final words are, in the words of Helen Hayes, I would say, you know, the expert in anything was once a beginner. And in the words of Steve Jobs, keep pushing, don't settle. And in the words of Pigs and Web, code is hard, but don't give up. I hope we all you know, embrace open source as part of our culture, 
And I hope to see you all in basically the world stage, the world class stage. And yeah, um, good luck with your journey. Thank you. Awesome session, uh, Uche. It was uh, uh, great listening to you and also watching lots of the glowing comments that uh, have been coming on. Yeah, I think uh, Iho shared the link to mentoring in, in the chat. If anyone is interested in CNCF mentoring programs, the URL is mentoring.cncf.io. And also, we have a comment from uh, YouTube. Uh, let me just pronounce good man. <laughs> let me not spoil the rest of the name. <laughs> he says, great yeah. session, Obit. And I think there has been quite a lot of glowing comments uh, uh, on, on Twitter also. Now, a quick question. Um, how have you dealt with imposter syndrome? I know it's... Uh, it's a major thing that most people struggle with, especially when you come from an environment where you probably struggle or feel as if you are not uh, capable within a particular group and you now get to an international company. How do yeah. you manage imposter syndrome? Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's, I think that's a very wonderful question. Actually, I wrote about it on, on my personal blog party of there so maybe i could also share the link probably after uh, this session yeah um so when i joined grafana labs of course i i felt like an imposter in, in fact i still do um to be honest i still do but i think what has helped me was you know, me taking time to reflect on other achievements how far i've come so basically what i try to do is i try to actually reflect back and see, okay, I've actually done this, I've actually done that, I've actually done this in the past. So because I've been able to do this in the past, it also admits that I can actually pass this hurdle. So that is one. And then the second part is, you know, I try to, you know, have conversations, you know, with the people you know, within the company. So I know for sure, like, I, I work here in a very um, senior team and, you know, I know for sure that most of the seniors must have you know, gone through you know, that particular stage and i try to have some conversations with them and you know tell them that hey this is how i feel you know this is what i'm feeling basically and it's so reassuring to actually learn that they also feel the same way and they also have felt the same way at some point in their career so i think basically speaking up uh, and reaching out you know, they're also it helps in, in scenarios like that and then of course uh, you know, believing in yourself um, it's hard it's hard to believe in oneself but I, I think you just have to believe in yourself because if you don't uh, no one will uh, so yeah I think that's, that's like my few tips on how I was able to fight in those session. awesome yeah another question one thing I think uh, uh, most people struggle with is uh, taking feedback feedback mm -hmm. because most times uh, we are from different cultures and we speak differently there are some people who are direct mm -hmm. when they share their opinion directly you can feel offended sometimes but they don't yeah. know it as uh, an offense or something wrong because that's how they share that is how they communicate how what's your experience with feedback and how do you manage when someone is direct to you or not necessarily confrontational, but the feedback looks direct? Yeah, that's also a very, very good question. So I've, I've had a couple of experiences you know, about you know, receiving feedback. And I think for me personally, it's basically me knowing that I know nothing. So the fact that I know that I know nothing means that I know for sure that there are a lot of experts, there are a lot of people that, are, that knows way more than I do. And what I try to do is I try to um, I, I try to have uh, loosely held uh, beliefs, basically. So I know for sure, okay, this is my belief. This is what I think it is. But then it's completely loosely, loosely held. So 
I am a huge believer in experiences. So the fact that I know that you've had a couple of experiences means that you know this more than I do. And in scenarios like that, I, I know for sure all I get to do is just to listen and to just take whatever you are actually trying to you know, tell me, basically. So, so yeah, I think basically what has done what has done the trick for me was knowing that I know I, I know nothing. It's not like I know nothing, basically, but knowing that I am still starting out so this journey has actually made me to absorb feedback and also I try to also make sure that the person giving the feedback has like has some form of domain knowledge on what he or she is giving in the first place. Because if you have zero knowledge about this and then you're giving me feedback on, you know, on something you claim you have knowledge about, then it makes no sense basically because you have zero knowledge. So I try to as much as possible to make sure that the person on the other hand has a lot of experiences and that could actually make me to like absorb their feet. So yeah, um, having loosely held uh, beliefs, um, I think it does the trick. Awesome. Yeah. One last question I want to ask is um, there's this thing uh, that happens quite a lot lately. There are lots of announcements on Twitter. People are doing a lot of great things, which is really exciting for our community. Apart from people, companies raising funds, a lot more people are getting uh, international opportunities. That is what we want, and that is what, as a community, we want to happen because there is a lot of thought leadership on the continent, but yeah. that access to opportunity is not there. But there's one other thing I also term announcement driven development, where yeah. People push themselves not to grow or to build a career, but just to put something out there on social media. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, instead of focusing on building their career and building themselves, they end up just looking and struggling for the next thing that they want to post on social media. What do you think about this? Have you experienced it? Or what advice do you have on managing social media, managing? uh such um pressure from social media yeah 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 that's that's a very very good question so so for me personally you know i've always had like you know, big dreams and you know even when like you know, i contributed to channels and you know, joined grafana labs and become a CNCF ambassador i knew there was more to what i could achieve and you know because you know, because of open source, I've been able to work closely with like exceptional people, like you know, principal software engineers, like you know, architect, software architects. I've been able to work with really experienced people. And you know, one thing I notice at all times is yes, it's good to you know, share my story, but then it's also important to bear in mind where the destination, like in mind what your destination is basically so the fact that i know that i have i still have a very long way to go i tend not to focus on my achievements now you know and you know right from day one i've always i've always been someone that is value driven so uh, yes the noise is quite important but then i focus on the end results basically so so yeah you know, basically I, I think my advice should be for anyone having such challenges is first things first I, I think you should you know be ambitious you know have very you know, good ambition if you have a big enough goal then you know that you know, the things you achieve now it's not in compared to where you want to be in the future and then i think the second one is um is basically focus on the end result. So this thing you want to share on social media, what's the end result? Are you sharing it just to you know, make people know that you've arrived? Or are you sharing it just to motivate people? Or are you sharing it just to like inspire people, basically? So have good intentions, be value driven, like, have a very good end result that you want to drive at the end of the day. And then, you know, last but not least, uh, I would say, you know, 
be authentic you know be original it's not like sharing news on social media it's not good. it's it's awesome it's awesome because it's, it gets the, you know, people motivated people take inspirations from them but try to be authentic you know try to share valid um, valid information don't just because everyone else is sharing and then you just want to lie about you know, the achievement so try to be authentic and try to you know actually be value driven that's that's basically what i think i would say about this things. awesome and for the uh, community don't get me wrong it's not wrong to celebrate your wins we should all celebrate our wins and be confident in some of the things we achieve and sometimes when you put yourself out there that is when people can know this is what you are good at this is what you've achieved and how they can work with you but it's also important to know what the goal is and stick to the goal yeah make your announcement share with the world but put let your eye be on the goal and uh, not uh, uh, get carried away with social media social media i always say social media is a place where people put forward their facade what you are seeing might not necessarily be what is true but while we are trying to celebrate our wins it's also very important for us to put our eyes on the goal and make sure we achieve our core objective awesome yeah so i i, I don't see any other questions in the chat uh yeah let me see yeah well, once again thank you very much for joining us here and uh awesome so uh, uche will be moving to the enterprise stage he's our uh track uh, manager for the enterprise stage he had to come here to still to share with us his experience while while he's moving to the enterprise stage i will touch base with our next speaker